much. Yeah, I think we should. When it comes to the medical world, few things are more controversial than medicinal cannabis. Some experts swear by it, others aren't as convinced. New research is hoping to silence the doubters for good. To tell us more, surgeon and neuroscientist Dr Rahul Jandil joins us now from LA. Doctor, good morning to you. Uh, medicinal cannabis isn't exactly new, right? But what makes this latest research so interesting? Well, it's moved into the biggest journal we have in the States called New England Journal of Medicine. So it's, you know, everything about medicinal cannabis has been anecdotal for most people. Uh, some scientists think it's not rigorous enough when it's being tested. But New England Journal of Medicine did a study, kids with epilepsy, they were given a placebo or they were given CBD component of cannabis and they had a lot fewer seizures. And this is for a disease that there are no pills or other treatments. So it's feeling a lot more legitimate, the scientific work that's being used to investigate it. It's interesting because we're often hearing about how medicinal cannabis can actually treat various kinds of conditions. What mm -hmm. is it that's different this time? Well, there's two things, but there are two things that in the states, the FDA, our Food and Drug Administration has approved. One is seizures and the other one is for cancer patients. Mm. If they have appetite issues or nausea and vomiting, it's also proof for that. I think what we're finding now is as momentum builds, more and more people are looking into diseases that can be treated with medical cannabis. And I think that's important because we don't have treatments for some, th for some issues like autoimmune or nausea and vomiting, again, with chemotherapy, and this seems to fit into that very you well. You know, anecdotally, uh, I've got a, a bunch of people who I know who... who have, um, who, you who have a based, friend. Yeah, no. Friend of a friend. Well, li literally, <laughs> who, who can't really um, function as well because of whatever Without pain it. they're going through. Yeah. Uh, this has been going on for years, and I just wonder why Australia seems to have, have dragged the chain a little. And some of it comes back to the fact that they don't know what ongoing side effects might be, right? Mm. Right. Okay, so good question. I, I do want to unpack that a little bit. So when people ingest cannabis, there are actually two components, mm. CBD and THC. THC is the psychoactive one that also gets you high. CBD can treat some of the things you've mentioned and doesn't get you high. So what we're doing here in the States is actually trying to look at the ingredients, the compounds that lead to different effects. And the more we learn, actually, the studies are promising, for example, neuropathy, where your hands are numb after chemotherapy, People are saying, hey, this works for me, and you have no other treatments, and I can do this safely, so why wouldn't we? Yeah. That's opened up the door to actual rigorous testing, and I think now more and more people can be, uh, get behind it. Yeah, Definitely. And that's the thing, it's become, I mean, it's, it is quite trendy. How long do you think it is before this kind of medicinal cannabis is used to treat almost every condition out there? Well, I mean, uh, yeah, that's a big question. I will say that in the 50 states, Many have legalized it for medicinal purposes, and some have legalized it for recreational. So what people are saying is, if I can do it safely, if it's not dangerous for me, let's say you take edible cannabis, then why am I being prevented from mm. using that when I'm allowed to go to the store and get aspirin, or I'm, I'm allowed to go to the restaurant and get a, a Riesling or a glass of wine? Mm. Mm. So I think it's, it's more in that profile of recreational plus medicinal leaving it to people, leaving it to patients, but giving them that information that, hey, look, this has been rigorously tested. Yeah, I'm a big supporter of this. Um, look, mm -hmm. I'll surprise no one. Um, but, um, <laughs> Doctor, Friday nights, L.A., uh, Bit of pizza. when you were back at uni, did you inhale? I'm not, well, no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to hold myself to the highest standards. Um, <laughs> and whereas Bill Clinton really couldn't inhale, I could, but still skipped it. <laughs> still skipped it. Man of integrity you are. <laughs> he could lie to you beautifully. And you I love it. Know, yeah. Good on you, Doc. It's, it's tremendous. Uh, interesting uh, research, too. Yeah. Appreciate it. Hey there, today fans. Sarah and. <laughs> What's my name again? Oh my <laughs> Carl. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube <laughs> channel, though. Subscribe now for more news, special reports, and amazing Aussie stories. And Carl misbehaving, Whoa, of course. That never happens. Always happens. What's she talking about?